Year's tax deadline is only days away, and if you haven't taken action already, the time is now. On your side, Christine Lazar joins us with a financial coach for some tips. Christine. Good morning. Yeah, you can say that again. The average tax return this year stands at about $3,200, that according to the IRS, and that's a 4% increase from last year. But experts say many miss out on key deductions, and to discuss that and more, I'm joined by author and tax expert Dr. Lynn Richardson. Good morning. It's always a pleasure to have you on. You're always a wealth of information, but you you know, as Jamie mentioned, we just are days away from the tax deadline. If this deadline has crept up on you and you're so behind, what do you do? Well, the first thing is don't panic. Panic isn't going to get you anywhere. Sit down, take some time, reach out to a tax professional if you have to. Go through all of your receipts, all of your bank statements. What a lot of people don't realize is you can not only download your bank statements, but you can also download the Excel data from your bank account to make things a little easier to get through. But definitely reach out to a tax professional, get some help, and do not panic. Okay, so once you get over that aspect, yes. there are key deductions that people miss every year, and that's literally leaving money on the table. What are the most commonly missed deductions? Well, the commonly missed deductions are the things that we do every single day, like eat, drive our cars, use our cell phones. When you drive your car for personal reasons, you don't get a tax deduction. When you drive your car for business reasons, you do. When you go out to eat for personal reasons, you don't get a tax deduction. When you go out to eat for business reasons, you do. Having a business lunch, business dinner, business coffee. When you use your cell phone for personal reasons, you do not get that money back. You don't get a tax deduction. But when you use your cell phone for business reasons, you do. The IRS says that over 300 times. And what most people need to realize is if they look at the things that they're doing every day, they'll find in many cases tens of thousands of dollars in tax deductions that they're missing every single year. Like hiring your children. Oh my goodness, hiring your children is one of the biggest ones. You're gonna spend money on them anyway, on food, clothing, school clothes, school supplies, birthday presents, Disney World. But if you hire your child to work in your home-based business, you can pay each one up to $13,400 a year. That money is a tax write-off to you, you get it back, and it's tax-free to your child. And children can work in your business doing many things, managing your social media, managing your database, helping you to uh, search for new clients, modeling in your business like uh, the Gerber and the Huggies babies do. So there are so many things that your children can do in your business. And the Department of Labor says when you hire your child to work in your home-based business, the regular labor laws do not apply. So it's so much education for people to get. And you can do that even if, say, you're a W-2 employee Monday through Friday in an office, you can still create your own home-based business. Absolutely, that's the best way to do it because if you're a W-2 in your office, if you are a W-2 employee and you work from home and you drive someplace, you still don't get a tax write-off. But if you're a W-2 employee and you work from home and now you're driving for your own home-based business, you do get a tax write-off. So that's really a really important distinction. Working at home and having a home-based business are two different things, and you want to know the difference between the two and get educated. And you mentioned to me, too, having that home-based business also helps you with medical expenses. Oh, my Explain goodness. That. Medical expenses. So if you have a home-based business and you operate as a sole proprietor or a single-member LLC that operates as a sole proprietor, you get to set up an employer reimbursement account, an employer medical reimbursement account. So all of those expenses that do not get covered by your insurance, your co-pays, those dental expenses, uh, root canals, implants, all those things. Which can really add up. Which can add up because they are not a tax write-off until you reach a certain percentage of your income. But if you have a home-based business, you get to write off the first penny. That could be tens of thousands of dollars for families, especially with children with braces. <laughs> yes, yeah. you can say that again. <laughs> now, you've mentioned the do's. What about the don'ts? What are things people should not do if they are in these final stages of filing their taxes? Listen, the, the thing is, do not cry over spilled milk. What you should not do is ignore your taxes. Taxes are like breathing. You have to do it every day. You really should be thinking about what you're doing every single day. You should ask yourself, I'm driving my car. Is this a tax write-off? If you know that the answer is yes, then document. If you don't know, then go and ask. So everything that you do every single day impacts what you're going to owe at the end of the year or what you're going to get back at the end of the year. Don't ignore the taxes. Don't panic. And don't wait. The deadline is April 15th. 
the state of California gives you an automatic extension until October 15th, but you still have to pay. So the deadline is for filing, not for paying. You don't want to get any penalties. So if you've got to pay, then make sure you pay on time. Okay, so be prepared and document and don't make it something you're just doing in March and April. You really want to do it year round. All year, every okay. single day, all the time. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> and for more information on Dr. Lynn and her tax tips, and she has so many of them, check out our website, kcalnews.com, and click on Seen on TV.